Oh, today I feel wonderful. You might wonder why I'm feeling wonderful. I come to you today feeling um, great because it's, uh, I would say, I'm almost to the end of season two of Lady Wendy. And if you look back into my YouTube channel, you would have seen me talking when I first started the Lady Wendy show and the, the reason behind it and the joy I felt when I said, oh yes, I'm going to do a talk show, I'm going to talk about things that make Guyanese, give them a chance to think about that purposeful life, about that driven life, um, how to live your, fulfill your dream without all the challenges, rather than that doom and gloom, as I repeat, if you listen to that, uh, I think it was my eighth episode when I went on and, and talk about what brought me to the Lady Wendy show. Now I'm in the second season of it. I must say it has, um, I feel excited that I was able to complete certain subjects, social subjects. Uh, most recently drug addiction. I, I, talk, I had a survivor of drug addiction and someone who was on drugs for 38 years. I know in that episode I try to show that we don't need to be shamed, we need to admit we had under that episode where you know we tend to sweep it under the carpet. So if one were to ask me what's all this talk about Lady Wendy, what's all this talk about, because I know people out there want to see shows that are more um, a woman slapping another woman or a man cheating, you've been, you've been pushing for those type of shows, but I wanted to really deal. With, um, I would say social issues, issues that could have us thinking. However, it's been a challenge because um, getting sponsorship is always very hard. Um, I recognize after doing the Lady Wendy show, now into, I believe, or in total, maybe 20 episodes, um, I recognize that what is really ch challenging for me is finances. And by that, I mean everything that you do goes back to that dollar sign whether we want to um, admit it or not if you're doing domestic violence you cover domestic violence some of the issues come out of it is that uh, women having three four men or men feeling the brunt of the responsibility it's all goes back to money if you talk to a, a drug addict some of them might have a, a void if someone died or or they of themselves don't have the resources so they're going to depression. And what I recognize that as I reach out to businesses out there as a whole, looking for that donation, mostly advertisement. One of the things that was very prevalent, a very um, a weird to me or it was very um, pronounced to me when I was out there, whether it was me or my rep, and they come back in looking for that advertisement, that sponsorship. One of the things that was very, very clear to me is that funds, businesses, were having a terrible, terrible time in their cash flow. Everybody that we ran into, whether it's true or not, or some people just don't know about marketing, some people just don't want to advertise your, their business. So it could be that, but what I think I'm almost, I would say as high as 70% certain that some business were actually going through losses or were not meeting their full potential because they were not properly structured or organized. Because I believe that if you're organized and you're structured, you don't need to just wait for Christmas um, April month uh, when there's Easter or specific or holidays to be to say well when those holidays roll around I would have a better cash flow. Uh, I recognize that they they were lacking uh, proper organizational structure and if I'm wrong I might be wrong and who am I but this is my opinion and everybody is entitled to their own opinions. So I felt the need and haven't spoken to several of my colleagues I said you know what is happening here in Guyana businesses are just being run, the micros and the small business are just being, everybody's opening business. Everybody, oh, I'm going to open up a, a, a car wash. I'm going to open up. But if you were to ask them, what structure? Have they put together a business plan? Have they done a feasibility study? Have they checked 
to see where funding is coming from. Where are they going to get? Have they looked at the, the various institution out there? Have they registered their business? I know for a fact that there, are, there are, uh, I would say as high as uh, another 70% of businesses that are not keeping up with how a business should work. And because of that, I felt that um, perhaps it's time that Lady Wendy starting to start to change my modem of operandi. By that I mean, yes, um, is to really, maybe the real help is financial, because if a business is successful, that means your, your country, your community is successful. Because if a business is successful, they will bring in, hire more staff, hire more expertise, and they will grow and the community grow as a whole. So after talking and throwing the idea around, we came up with a, um, what we call mentorship. I talked to a few colleagues and they have now officially voted that I can be the ED, Executive Director of the newly formed NGO dealing specifically with entrepreneur mentorship. Now you want to know what is that? Mentorship meaning you will be able to mentor them from the simple thing is, the first thing is setting up a business plan. They will be learning to set up a business plan. We will bring them consultancy service. We will teach them to network. We will have them do a projection. Now if I were to send you to, let's say, to Port Kaichuma or, to, or up to Madia, and I say go to Madia, first thing you ask is like, how do I get there? You need a roadmap. You need some kind of information to tell you how to get there. And I think in every business, you need to have what I call a business plan. You need to have a plan. And in that business plan, it encompasses marketing strategies, how to market your business, how to finance your business, how to do cash flow, how to do projection. Mind you, one might say I myself has many years of entrepreneurship, but I, I myself had those same pitfalls. And I believe that true uh, global entrepreneur mentorship, Guyana, we will be able to work with a different institution, whether go go governmental, non-governmental, uh, private sectors, uh, individuals, to help small to micro to small businesses meet their full potential. Leave from globe, some of them that I've met here today, move from local to global, to that global reach. Teach them what's happening out there, how to create customer services. I, I believe that that is my new mantra for Lady Wendy for the new year. Look out, we will be forming uh, entrepreneurial groups that you out there can network, that you out there can share your stories. If you have an ins inspirational story that you want to share, if you want to talk to other entrepreneurs, let's work as a collaborative because I'm telling you my fellow like, Guyanese and loved ones out there, Guyana will, is and about to change, I call it the new frontier. And as small businesses out there, if you want to, I would say, be in this new world order, if you want to be in, the, in what I call future growth of Guyana, you need to take your businesses seriously. And, and in taking your business, so when Lady Wendy comes knocking at your door for advertising, you don't have to hide, you don't have to promise, oh, call me tomorrow, call me tomorrow. And it's really because you don't have the resources to advertise or you don't believe in it. Through uh, mentoring, I will show you that you will, in the end, have the resources to do the things and build a strong community and a strong Guyana. So once again, I want to thank you for listening to me. I hope I may not have said everything you wanted to hear. Some of you may not agree with me, but I hope the 1% or the 2% who's listening that I can be able, with the board, 
to help you live a more purposeful, driven life that you can live, love, and laugh. And remember, you'll be able to share a smile with everyone and you wouldn't be so stressed out. Have a wonderful day. Have a